Right, Taliota champs, and look at this. This is the beast. This is the ROG Strix Scar. Or Scar Strix. But anyway, this is a 15-inch laptop. And like compared to the Zephyrus M16, which I sort of like reviewed last week, this thing here is more unleashed. More power, more gamer-focused. And this thing, yeah, 150-watt RTX 3080 Ti Wolf. Of course, 12th generation CPUs. This has a 12900H. Now, it would have been nice to see a HK just so we can undervolt it, but we'll find out if that's really necessary. We'll find out the thermals, how much power this outputs, the decibels, and yeah, we'll check that out in a sec. Here we have the watt meter. I don't know if this is useful. This is wattage from the wall. Let me know if you think that's useful. Give me a thumbs up and I'll include that in future videos. But essentially this is Asus's gamer focused sort of, you know, 15 inch laptop. No compromise here. It has a 16 by nine display compared to the M16, which has, you know, obviously a 16 by 10 display and obviously being 16 inch so this is more true to what a gamer would want 16 by 9 display high refresh 300 hertz display now this is a 1080p display you can actually get a 240 hertz 1440p display which probably i would prefer three millisecond response 100 percent srgb whereas the 1440p version is 100 percent p3 so it has a wider color gamut as well so i think that is the better display but this is more for you know people that are competitive gamers people that play esport titles you want the 300 hertz right you will want that all their displays come with adaptive sync all right so let's have a look at this display and oh yeah it looks pretty good doesn't it and let's have a listen to the speakers all right so i'll just turn those speakers down no more copyright please Honestly, those speakers weren't that loud, but they were definitely clear and not distorted at full volume. But here you can see the display looks pretty good. This is a bright sort of scene here. This is at maximum brightness. Let's just get a dark part of the screen and have a look at its coating. And there you can see, I can see the LEDs. You might not be able to see it with YouTube compression and I don't know what dynamic range you're watching this in. Of course I do it in HDR, but yes it is diffused but i can see the leds there so pretty good coating there if you don't want reflections i do prefer glossy but that's just me now the display is led so i would expect it to do what led displays do and because it's got one big backlight you know it won't get dark around the sort of bright areas like an oled or mini led but looks perfectly fine nothing get untoward there and there you can see there now there's supposed to be a trail there but yeah you can get an idea an led display doing one of the led display does now i have gamed on it and yes buttery smooth display as you would expect 300 hertz nice and smooth what you'd expect for a decent gaming laptop now when it comes to the gpu in this it has a mook switch so you can switch it to hybrid mode or mook switch mode which is called discrete mode you'll be able to see it here actually Right here we have it in discrete mode there. So you can see there I've got it in discrete mode and I have it on its turbo mode. So just take that in mind when I'm actually doing a thermal test or power output test in a sec. Has all the ports you want on it including Thunderbolt, 100 watt USB-C charging and has display port out through the MOOC switch as well. Of course this has liquid metal, DDR5, 4000 megahertz and here we can see Wi-Fi 6 Dolby Atmos, although it's probably not going to be bright enough for a true Dolby Atmos or Mini LED or OLED. Let's see how much power it has. Now something like this, a 15 inch laptop, you want at least 150 watts. This actually has a 280 watt power brick, so I'm expecting more than 150 watts, which is sort of like the benchmark for a 15 inch gaming laptop if it's sort of like a Max-Q. This is certainly better than Max-Q 150 watt GPU, so typically you don't get more than 150 watts or over a 2 280 watt power brick unless you go to the 17 inch segment now this is for me the best way to tell how powerful a gaming laptop is rather than benchmark unless you're benching all the laptops you're comparing this to at exactly the same time exactly same temperature exactly same windows build exactly same driver exactly same game build and yes i used to do that myself but i think this is a better way to tell how powerful a laptop is this is the power from the wall cpu temperature cpu package power so how much power using gpu temperature and gpu package power so let's see i've actually done a little benchmark before but let's see how much power we get and the temperature remember it has liquid metal and we're slamming that cpu 100 percent right now 
and I'll just bring this up as well if you really want to see this um, but there you can see 85 degrees on the CPU 125 watts woof I like that let's see if it can sustain it all the way through this Cinebench run ideally you want over 100 watts just CPU only okay now when you hit the GPU you would expect that to go down but obviously we're hitting just the CPU at the moment and still maintaining 121 watts and have a listen 190 watts from the wall that's the sound of it it's only 60 degrees that's because the wattage has died right down because it's already finished bench in the bench what wow what 19,000 is that for real Woof, man that is just bonkers 125 watts all the way that went so fast and i didn't even get to test the decimals let's do it again wow that's just blown me away that is the fastest laptop i've had out of anything fastest 19,000 what that is unheard of all right so 82 degrees 120 watts of course let's listen to the decibels when it kicks in the fan kicks in it is in its turbo mode remember the fans are starting to kick in now it's hit 90 degrees so the fan should go in hyperdrive still 120 watts that's wow all right decibels That's only 50 decibels. Fifty decibels. Hit 94 degrees there. Maintained the rage all the way through. Wow. And another 19,600. This is a monster. Wow. That is crazy. <clears throat> okay, we're hitting the GPU. We're getting 150 watts. Wow. 150 watts from the GPU in turbo mode again a full 150 so they ain't lying 150 watts it can do no problems and it's maintaining the rage there it hasn't dropped it's doing a full 150 watts and GPU temperature is only 64 degrees 65 degrees 150 watts that is awesome so i'll just leave it here i'll forward it a little bit okay i've left it for a little bit there and we hit 70 degrees just over 70 degrees 72 degrees and still maintaining 150 watts no problem and let's have a listen to the fans just hit 73 degrees there still maintaining 150 watts same 50 decibels in its turbo mode so very quiet fans like compared to the m16 which was like 60 decibels that's i love it like seriously i have no problems gaming with this headset on you're not going to hear it now let's hit the cpu while the gpu is getting hit 100 let's do it this is going to ruin it it ruins every machine you can see the wattage there it's just cranked up now what's the cpu going to stop at okay with dynamic boost it looks like 35 watts so we're maintaining 150 watts on the gpu which is what you want for gaming and it looks like actually the cpu will go down to 30 watts and what's the temperatures cpu 74 gpu 75 that's good to me let's have a listen using 220 watts from the wall decibels All right, 55 on the decibel meter so an extra five decibels there so it looks like it tops out at 56 decibels there so 56 decibels still pretty good right so 30 watts cpu 150 watts gpu that is awesome that's 180 watts which is well in excess of the 155 watts you get on the m15 and yeah that's a good wattage output for a 15 incher i'm very happy with the performance of this catch in the next one stay tuned for my full review tally ho